when we went to break, we were talking about obviously his life, and let's start with the University of Alabama. Obviously, you were a star in high school in, was it Mobile? Yes, at uh, Murphy High School. Then you went to the University of Alabama where you were Defensive Player of the Week. You had six in the history of the school, six most tackles and a story career with the Crimson Tide. Did you suffer your first injury while at Alabama? Yes. That was the knee injury that you speak of? No, the first knee injury came in high school. Then I uh, had been in college, but the first real, real thing, the real side thing was the shoulder, just my first simple knee. Now, the thing is, before uh, Keith, the two other linebackers that were drafted in the first round were Cornelius Bennett and Derek Thomas, okay? So yes. he was a next he was a next coming. Now, what kind of athlete were you? I've heard stories that you were a hell of a basketball player as well. Uh, yeah, I, 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 played, I played a little round ball. I'll tell you, I, I thought I was pretty good, man. Charles Buckley didn't recruit me for Auburn. I heard that. I mean, big yeah, time. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, and um, I think I kind of probably could have went from high school to the NBA. And in Alabama, you were running a 4-5-40. 4 4 That was my time this first. Yeah. Impressive. At what, at what weight? 255. Damn. That's fine. That's fine. That's, that's what gets you drafted higher and, and, and the height and all those kind of things. What are your memories of uh, Alabama? Do you have, are they good? I have great memories of the University of Alabama. What you're talking about, a lot of kids that there that go there, they go there for the tradition, the the, the, the history that they have. And then Nick Saban, he's he's one of the one of the rarest coaches I've ever seen. And a lot of people don't even understand what a head coach's job is. He, he coached the team, but more so importantly, he motivates the coaches to, and motivates the players. He makes them think they're better than what they are. That's what Paul Paul Bryant did for years. Bill Parcell does it. Yeah, but they'll throw you and take the mm -hmm. chip away. Yep. Um, but but <laughs> Ryan does it. Mm -hmm. And so, so when you start motivating those those those, those coaches and thinking they, they think they're super coaches, you start motivating them play up, they think they they way above everybody means, you rip them down, you build them up. But then it comes a time when you go into the real world. You're not invincible to the police, you're not invincible to life, you're not invincible to drugs. When did you first have your experience with it? What was your first experience with the police? I have no idea. I can't remember back that. Was it at Alabama or with the Bucks? No, neither. Neither. So, well, it was afterwards, and he got the yeah, 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 it was it was afterwards. Sure. That's what I'm talking about. You got to learn. The players have to live, learn to live life on life terms and realize that they're not subject to the law of the land. Okay. And a lot of athletes just, just don't 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 feel that like, like feel that way. I was um, I never hurt nobody or robbed nobody. Right. I just was dealing in the wrong place at the wrong time and dealing with the wrong people. And being I was keeping cans, I got put in the headline news. So there you have it. And then if Michael Jordan or, or, or Michael Vick or Ian Bethel go to the hood and they have a steam, they gonna be in the paper, not the guys who actually done the crime. So I was a victim to a lot of that, a lot of those arrests. But I went and dealt with it because after the embarrassment. And, and being on national television, I just don't want to be seen. Now, you mentioned Michael Jordan and Michael Vick. In Michael Vick's case, he was guilty. Oh, well, yeah, he was guilty. I'm trying not to defend. I just, okay. just randomly pick somebody. Right, right. Okay. Uh, celebrity always, uh, celebrities have newspapers. Sure, absolutely. They, 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 absolutely. they, make, they make money for, 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 for the news. Yeah, if it's, not a, news a, if it's not a recognizable name, they're not going to be printed in the newspaper and be on the front page of the Metro section or on the front page, period. Right. Now, I, I said this, you just said it yourself. I said, he's a good person. He's never hurt anybody other than himself. You know what I'm saying? And you've right. been through a lot. Now, watching the 3030 special, I said it was well done because they had specialists on there talking about players not being ready. And if you win the lottery, a lot of people aren't ready yeah. to have that much money. Now, you were talking about situations where you had with family and friends that let you down. Now, the one thing I'm going to say about you, Keith, and we're brothers, is that we, we were naive. Okay, I think you were naive of a lot okay. of stuff that was happening around you. You know what I'm saying, and that you know what led to your demise. So, how, what kind of situations do you have with friends and family that that did you wrong money wise? I have an uncle that took my house, a hundred thousand dollar house. He took your house. Well, he didn't take. I he got back on the back behind tax. I didn't work in 15 years. I went to the National Football League and asked him for help. Mm -hmm. Then after the, the the taxes has got built up, one of the couple of hundred, hundred twenty five thousand. And they said, oh, we'll do it. We'll do this. This is my uncle. This is my mother. Mm -hmm. This is my mother brother. Mm -hmm. And thinking he going to do the right thing, I really help us out because I didn't help everybody in my family out. I yeah. bought them houses, cars. Yeah. I created business for them. And 
I rolled by and all of my mobiles were sitting on the street. They flew us out, he moved in, 45 acres of land, 800,000 dollar house. I'm like, my mother died with a broken heart. Things yeah. like that, money destroy, the love of money would destroy everything. Is that the, the love of money is the root of all happiness? Mm. It, 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 it destroys everything. And that's one statement I made that I know we want to be rich again because you don't know who your, who your friends are for your friends. You don't know who wants you for what. It's, in this world, it's like opportunity. If you can't, if, if you can't benefit me, I have no, re, I, I have no use for you. And that's, that that goes along, uh, along a lines of being a celebrity, a superstar, a millionaire, mm -hmm. and all those and all that. If you can't benefit me. I, am, I, I, I don't want to deal with you. We have Keith McCants in the studio, University of Alabama, then the fourth overall pick by the Buccaneers in 1990. Keith, if you put those headphones on, if you're comfortable taking phone calls, are you comfortable with that? Yes. All right, let's start here with Fred. Fred, good morning. Hey. Hey, Fred, how you doing? 